Hello, welcome to the video. Uh, I'm Melissa, I write books, we're writing a thriller, and I'm, I'm telling you that because I am gonna write today. Do you hear me? I'm going to write. But we're getting to this point of my life, of my writing process, where I wanna clean, which is not good, because it means I am avoiding it. The human mind is so wild to me sometimes, all the time, really, anytime I think about it, because two weeks ago, I was fully so fine with sitting down and writing for four hours in a row. And today, the thought of 25 minutes, I'm like, but what if I get bored? I'm like, girl, don't know what that's about. So this is going to be a vlog for today, Sunday, and tomorrow, Monday, I think. It's 9.09, I have to be somewhere at 10, and I really wanna clean my kitchen, but I'm gonna write instead because I just need to. Right now, writing seems like this thing that's hanging over my head that it's like, you better do that, you know? And so I think if I just do it right away, that will be more successful for me than like being stressed about doing it. And here's the thing, you might be thinking like, Alyssa, why don't you just take a day off and not do it? I know myself at this point, and right now the reason I don't wanna do it is not because I'm burnt out or I'm, or because I need to take a break from the story. The reason I'm not doing it is because I'm lazy at this moment in relation to the story, it's because I'm like, it doesn't sound fun. No, do it, you're fine. And if I do 25 minutes, then I can clean my kitchen. You guys, me wanting to clean my kitchen, rewind to three vlogs ago or something when I'm like, I don't wanna clean, you know? This is why I should not make decisions based on an immediate like, oh, I want that, you know? Because the, what I feel like doing changes so much. And so it's so important to be objective, but also to listen to what you are consistently consistently feeling. I don't know, just that I can go from like wanting to clean and not, and then another day wanting to write and that it's flipped all the time. Like it just, you didn't know you were getting introspective right away in the morning, did you? Oh, oh, oh. Hi everyone, welcome back to fan favorite segment. I've been scrolling on TikTok for 45 minutes and I feel like garbage. Ah, like truly, I just had the worst doom scrolling hour of my life. Oh look, the sun is setting. Did I notice? No, because I was learning about how there was this one prison in this one random state where if you, somebody was hospitalized for a gang violent then they would, the person responsible would automatically be put in solitary confinement for five years. That, again, random. Or about this whole family killed in a drunk driving accident. Moral of the story is don't drink and drive. Thank you and good night. Oh, it was so, it was like a toxic doom struggle. Like I just kept seeing horrible things. And I've just spent an hour of time doing nothing but ruin my mind. So that's annoying. Um, but I have about an hour, yeah, about an hour left of the day. So I think I'm gonna, I'm over halfway done with the chapter this morning. Oh, did I tell you? This morning I wrote like 800 words in that 20 minute sprint. So that was good. The rabbits need to like get a hobby. Why do you live here? There's just always something to do, which is life. Maybe I should make a schedule. No, stop trying to, Let's just start doing it, okay? <laughs>
Hello. Good morning. It's Monday. Oh, is it gonna rain? I'm in chapter four now. I finished chapter three last night. Did I talk to you after doing that? I did 871 words in that 25 minutes. And to remind you, these are words that are sort of already written, but I'm writing them again. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Essentially, it's like if you were translating incoherent toddler. Like if the toddler is telling you hop, hop, grass, and you know this toddler, you'll say, oh, they're talking about a bunny in the front yard. And so then the sentence you would write down would not be hop, hop, grass. It would be, I see a bunny in the grass. Like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> like I'm taking the words of, of an unhinged toddler who doesn't know the English language yet and writing it into sentences that look like a book. So the original dictation is like the toddler talking to me and then I'm translating. So sometimes the toddler will say something, I'm not sure referring to the dictation as the toddler, will say something that is like really close to a sentence. They'll say like, I want cookies. And I'm like, great, I'll just write down I want cookies. But sometimes the toddler says like, something really random and specific. And then I'm like, what does that mean? What what was the toddler trying to say? And how do I make it correct? So that's essentially what I'm doing right now. In layman's terms, I'm writing the dictation that I dictated with no punctuation or grammar into a readable document, which I've already said, I feel like a hundred times. I am really enjoying this book. I remember liking it and I do. I think you learn something with each book you write. In my history of writing, I wrote a really unhinged book in high school <laughs> that was like a dystopian knockoff of The Selection and The Hunger Games and Divergent all at once. And it was 300,000 words. It was ridiculous. And did it have a unique plot in it? I mean, no. It's pretty much just an amalgamation of everything I'd ever written, but it was, it was like, it was fine. So that book taught me how to just like write a book. Not really though. And then the book I wrote in college, there was a plot, it was tight, there was a conclusion, like it was a full story. And I think that was the first time I'd ever written something that long that was an actual story. And it was very ambitious. What happened with Groove or the wedding season, whatever we want to call it, I feel like I learned how to actually plot a book following a save the cat kind of a structure. like have a structured, plotted, emotionally driven, character driven, plot driven, like everything was actually there. Like it had all the elements. I mean, near the end of June got there, the book I wrote in college got there eventually, but it took a lot of revision to get there. Anyway, so that's what I feel like the wedding season ended up being. And I do feel really good about that book now. It's just differently paced. Um, and this book, I feel like, what I, what I struggled with with gas station or with um, the wedding season for so long was that the, like the first half of the book, there just wasn't a lot happening. Like I really had to work hard to get stakes into the beginning of the book and to get conflict and interesting, interesting conflict to happen in the beginning of that book because I thought it was interesting what was happening, but it was so bloated. It was just like nothing really happened until a certain amount in. Now it's, I think it's fixed. But with this book, I learned from that. And as I was outlining, I was like, conflict is happening on page one. The internal conflict for both characters are strong and clear. So it's less about what, like discovering what the, no, it's like, here's the conflict, here are the stakes right away. Um, and I know not every book needs to be like that, but I think it's good for me to write something like that because I want to be able to write books that have good stakes right away. And so while I might be going a little bit overboard on this one with the stakes, it makes it fun to read <laughs> and fun to write because it's like the drama is starting on page one. And I did put in every trope that I like to read, so it's also fun. I think for this week, I'm going to try to do the like the NaNoWriMo pace like 1667 because I was gonna do chapter but like this chapter like chapter three was like 2500 words in its toddler iteration but this chapter is 4200 words so it's really not fair to do it that way 
So I think I'm just gonna go with 1667, which means if I do one more 25 minute sprint, I mean, I should, that would make sense. Cause if I'm at almost 900 words and I wrote another 800, 900 words, that would be 1667. <laughs> I feel like I've never stopped doing dishes since I bought this house. <laughs> Listen, okay, ready? The dishwasher works, but does it? Okay, so I did it the first time and then nothing was really clean. And then I bought better dishwasher pods, but I just haven't used them. I kind of like washing dishes, but it's a nuisance and it takes over my life. But he here's a montage of me washing the dishes. Welcome to a new segment called a new homeowner goes to Target for makeup and comes home with more than makeup. I bought some things so I want to show. Okay so I have been using like my grandma's old towels which they're great thank you grandma but uh, I wanted to buy some new ones so I got this towel. I think I got a hand towel too. Also a hand towel. Same little pattern. I have a, I have some towels. I just wanted one that was new because they were, all the ones I've had, I've had since college. Then I got two curtain rods and some blackout curtains for my bedroom. Then I got, since my candle died and my other candle did break, the one that I had been using for gas station, which I'm trying not to see as symbolism because it was just like during the move, it broke. So I got this rainwater lily smells delicious so that'll be my new candle for gas station that'll burn when i write it i got some pretzel crisps because i eat a ridiculous amount of pretzel crisps every day and it's part of my life my blood has pretzel crisp energy in it i also got some work gloves this was such a random trip to target so that you know when i'm out doing the landscaping in my yard then i did get what i went there for which is my um, powder foundation, which please be the right shade. Please be the right shade. Thank you. And then I, I got two different concealers because I don't know what shade I am and they were only $7. And as I tan and get paler, I'll probably use both of them. So got that. I think I have something else too. Oh yeah, I got this bowl because I have a lot of bowls, but I don't have like a big bowl like this. And so this is for probably making bread and salads. See, that wasn't even very many things, but it's so funny because I feel like I got one thing from each of the areas that I looked in because I was really, I almost bought a bike. I almost bought like a whole gardening setup and like a whole bathroom setup, but I reined it in and I only bought what I needed and wanted, but, it, but all of these are like, I did need them. That's my Target haul. I really thought it was more things I'm proud of myself. Oh, and I also got some popcorners, but I've already been eating them. I think I'm gonna close out this video. I'm still gonna write. It's about 7 p.m. I went on the run, the run. Remember a couple days ago when I was like, I have that five minute run today. It was not that day. I still had a three minute or that day. Today was the five minute in a row run. And you have to do it twice, which is diabolical. And when I tell you, I thought my calf was going to fall off of my body. 
So that was exciting and fun. Um, tell me if this is suspicious because I thought it was suspicious. I was running and this little red car was driving and then it kind of like pulled to the curb like 20 feet ahead of me. And as someone who writes thrillers, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna cross the road to the other side of the road. Just, just out of an abundance of caution. So I cross the road. Once I reach the other side of the road, this car like zooms away. Nobody got out of the car. So comment down below if that was suspicious. Yeah, might just be my paranoid brain. Or maybe I dodged a bullet, who knows? Anyway, so I'm gonna write my other 800 or so words in the next 25 minutes here, it's about seven. And then just finish up a couple other things today, but it was a good productive day, I got a lot of things done. And yeah, I'll see you in a couple days. If you made it this far in the video, comment a pair of running shoes to commemorate my five minute run. One day it will be 30. Today is not that day. Today my legs, and like you can even just tell, I feel like I sound like I've been hit by a truck. <laughs> it's feeling like I'm finally settling into this kind of regularity with writing where it's not so consuming, but it's still present, you know? I've only been, it's only felt like that for a couple of days. So I'm hoping to kind of maintain this balance, but we'll see, so.